The year was 1983. A young, fully pregnant woman, along with her husband, migrated to Australia in search of new hopes to build new dreams. As a PhD holder in polymer chemistry, it wasn't a hard task for her to secure a job in Australia those days. However, her dreams did not let her settle there. Very soon in 1984, she started her school for Indian classical music and offered her service to the many Indian and Indian background students who was in search of a best option to learn music. And last year, this lady celebrated 35 years of this school. Allow me to introduce you to the latest, the newest recipient of the coveted Order of Australia medal, Dr. Rama Rao. Namaste, Dr. Rama Rao. It's a pleasure to have you on the icon. Thank you so much, Shama. And congratulations on Thank winning you. this title. Thank you so much. And it's, a, it's such a beautiful, lovely introduction from a lovely lady. I'm already pleased. <laughs> I guess I came in 80, 83 and then to a land of opportunities. Australia is called, called a land of opportunities. Absolutely. Yeah, looking for opportunities. Of course, as I was migrating, when I had my interview, the, the embassy officer gave me the visa granted and then called me Australia Welcomes Singing Chemist. Wow! So when he said that, it didn't really hit me, but now when yesterday when I got my honors for doing music, service in music and dance, along with my career, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a substantial career in chemistry as a chemist, as a scientist, then I realized this guy is absolutely a fortune teller. Or a, he already predicted, predicted my 35, 35, 38 years of life in 19... 80 to November itself. Oh, beautiful. So that was such a beautiful uh, recollection. Suddenly, just as soon as I, I got my uh, award and everything, suddenly all the memories came like a, like a flash. Just like a flash. So it was such a beautiful experience. And then it's, uh, and I want to say hello to all M4 TV audiences. And we'll go from there. Uh, in fact, moving into Australia, you know, way back in the 80s, um, early 80s, you know, you called it the land of opportunity. There was the multiculturalism was picking up and, you know, there were opportunities for artists like you. Now that you now that we have, you know, in this century and in this generation, we see that there are so many artists and, you know, so many newcomers in the industry. Uh, but way back when you started, how was it all? Was it easy to set up a music school or, you know, did you have many takers for Indian music then? Yes, actually, the, the, that's a very, very beautiful question. When I came on the 17th of February, that was a Thursday, and that Saturday, I just started singing on, in a family gathering. And then they expected that just I'll sing one song and two songs. But by the time I started singing, it was almost three o'clock in, wow. in the early in the hours. But they didn't expect because they didn't have uh, they were not trained, to such, trained yeah. singers. Right. So many strange singers. So people were just a part time and hobby singers. Right. That kind of thing. So I started like that. And then as soon as they realized it, I'm, I'm a trained singer. I had a lot of um, people approaching me, can you please teach me one song, two songs like that. So I was just doing that almost whole of 83. Then I realized the demand was increasing. Mm -hmm. So then I had to officially start a school. The name of my school is Krishna Ravadi School of Carnatic Music. So I started in 1984 and the name Krishna comes from my mother's name because who is the really the force behind my um, you know, developing my passion in music, in music and then growing the music. So I used her name as Krishna Veni, oh, Krishna, beautiful. and then Ravali. So joined together, my school's name is Krishna, Krishna Ravali. Ravali. And started with four or five students. And at that time, very surprisingly, I had Australian uh, students. Hmm. The reason why their interest was not only on Carnatic music, but they were learning Bharatanatyam. 
Oh, lots mm-hmm. of them. When they, because they were learning Bharatanatyam, they thought they had to to have a better understanding. Better understanding. They realized that if they if they have music, uh, at least and the basics and yes. understanding, they dance. They can enjoy the dance, and then they can even pick up the dance and then improve on that. So that's the that's that's the way I had I started. But after that, now I've got a range of students. I've got I've got Indians, Sri Lankans, Singaporeans, Malaysians, and actually I've got even uh, um, mother Malaysian and then father Chinese. All uh-huh. kinds of all kinds of people I've got now. I think school now at least I've got 120 people uh, uh, learning on a regular basis. and then we do regular um, talent that is uh, so fantastic uh, yeah. in fact uh, with a full time career you are um, uh, you're a scientist and uh, uh, you have your you are you're a research scientist with uh, surface coating yeah. um, with that kind of a career which has you know a lot of intensity and dedication required for your work how did you manage to you know run your passion with such uh, you know such vigor and passion <laughs> That's exactly right. You have you already answered the question. The passion is the punch word. <laughs> that's the that's the word. Passion it means that is that is coming from inside. Passion is something where you look forward. I look forward to my doing my chemistry experiments. I look forward to doing my uh, musical uh, like pieces. Right. Uh, sing for dance. Sing for uh, film music, orchestra. Sing for all of them. I look forward, and then that's a, that's a that's a such a big force internal force that's totally internal force is not like doing a chore or doing for you know a simple task it is just completely a flow coming from inside when you have such a strong flow the time and space those dimensions disappear so you don't have no time limits because you you're just enjoying it so much you don't feel the time you don't feel the tiredness you don't feel the thing you keep pumping more the more you do the more you enjoy the more you put in so that's how this i just was not never letting any opportunity go i i i, I sing classical music i sing bhajans i sing uh, those days it's that we had lots of uh, film music orchestra so i used to be part of the film music lovely orchestra. you know I'm usually some are trained in uh, carnatic music as you know very strict about not changing their genre nah. they just don't want to do anything but that music um, for me is a broader thing i even like operatic music i like all kinds of music but i'm a, basically my basic training is carnatic music from there i i started picking up lots of uh, all genre right of musical forms and then i enjoy and then i enjoy uh, dancing uh, singing for dancing singing for dance then i and i've been lucky enough to actually be a part of your exactly. musical uh, 20 35th year journey where i had to perform with my students yes, exactly right <laughs> but um, dr rama uh, there is one thing that makes me very curious do you know how these um, uh, celebrities or film stars uh, they they often say that film or acting is their passion they do it with so much passion and yet you see that many indian uh, stars or especially women uh, they stop their career once they get married um, for various reasons and usually uh, having a family or you know moving into a family life is one of those biggest reasons why most people have to take uh, say due to their career but now you say that you moved in with uh, with your husband and you had your baby in australia and the very next year you were all you were already working when you moved in and you also started your school how how do you manage to juggle between a full time profession a passion that you carry on with so much um, uh, so much of love and a family that's that's the say now say if i look back 30 years back i myself do not know how i managed <laughs> because because it's that 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 what you call that young and energetic and then i want to i want to be a good musician i want to be a good scientist and i want to be and i want to take up every opportunity right. i want to take up every opportunity and then with all these things you can't forget behind every successful person there is a a a, a, a strong hand and strong force hmm. that's none other than my husband jagan jagan he, he he was actually though he was at home but most of his job he was working with bhp and then he was uh, looking after global projects so he was always traveling hmm. he was always traveling but ha- having said that i had 
my sometimes my niece and one one of my nephews they came here to study so i had they gave me a bit of a support right. i can't forget that and then my mother in law sometimes giving me some kind of support but more than anything else i feel my children i should really be you have two beautiful, beautiful daughters two beautiful daughters but having said that i never imagined i mean i never even had an experience where they demanded certain kind of food and certain kind of thing absolutely i don't even remember my kids demanded anything from me wow. absolutely not and and i never told them you have to do your homework you have your time to get up your i don't even remember doing that what what exactly must have happened i'm only thinking now because i i happen to be busy you okay, can mummy is either singing or working or maybe cooking or doing bit of the housework so mummy is busy so we have to automatically adjust to mum's routine i think that kind of look and learn right right just watch me and do mum mum is busy mum is doing music mum is and that inspired them to work towards a, a, a goal exactly that they right. had and yeah. then i don't have time to go behind them and making them do their homework or anything all the thing is i think have what exactly happened was i i without my knowledge i led by example right so i was busy and i was busy with my work i was busy with the music and everything they picked up everything in fact if i still remember my uh, walter daughter neha just straight down comes from the school and they sit at one one particular corner her favorite corner where the heater is and <laughs> she will sit down and do her homework i while i'm cooking so right. i feed them and then just jump on jump and jump into the car and then go for rehearsals go for rehearsals and come back at 1 o'clock in the night and then again 5 o'clock get up and then again get up because the reason is i think that i still feel that is again go goes back to as we spoke earlier passion the passion is i can't leave my chemistry because when when i cook when i cook when i'm adding salt for me i, I can see <laughs> yes exactly i can see sodium ions and chloride ions and then when i'm when i'm putting bake, baking powder or something that i can see sodium bicarbonate so my mind has been saturated with either with chemistry or on the other side if i'm just singing as soon as you start singing vaata api i can say gare re so the your, your notations come, come the notation comes in so for me my brain is oscillating between the two so you have a perfect balance between your left and right hemisphere <laughs> that's <laughs> fantastic yeah. so. in fact um, you know that reminds me like uh, there is something very beautiful about parents uh, being uh, academically inclined i remember my mom you know trying you know telling me how to eat my meals you know so she point at things and say eat your carbohydrates you need your protein to grow what about your fat so you know uh, every time i look at a meal plate i see all this uh, and it was fa- fascinating you know how they led by examples and you know taught us what evaporation is by you know letting the water boil and you know sometimes the milks are uh, evaporated and you know she's like that's evaporation <laughs> exactly but it's it's beautiful how you know children can be inspired from their parents especially working parents you know who lead by examples like yourself mm. I- Yeah, and also I, I i refuse to scream at my children in ah. case they make a mistake because that might actually spoil my voice for my concert wow. so i used to write on the pad <laughs> i said that oh, neeta i'm not happy with you do this write it and then be young neeta used to reply back on the pad then neha says mom can't use her voice what about you mate you can write why you can talk you can talk but you, but that is such a v- fantastic thing you know nobody in your family you know ever raises a voice you know they're like <laughs> they're very very pally in terms of uh, I, you are so passionate about your m- music and you make make sure that you know you don't even use it in a negative way so that you yeah. know it doesn't affect yeah, your voice absolutely absolutely they know that they know that so i mean everything is i think almost everything is been like uh, uh, set set hmm. everything is set and then everything very young age itself they know that oh don't disturb mom mom is practicing don't disturb mom she is doing some report for the uh, for work work report so like that they are look they look and i think that that goes uh, to say that when you are young and then uh, you know whatever you see you you absorb hmm. so i think that's exactly what uh, both kids some my contribution to their growth or their enlightenment is zero hmm. that's how i feel that's how i feel except they learned it 
from whatever wow. i was doing in fact so. you you're not just a chemistry um, teacher okay you are a researcher and that shows your passion towards what you what you do you've been uh, you know researching on polymer chemistry you are probably responsible you know your research is probably responsible for the uh, paints that are being applied in uh, homes these days exactly right because i developed one uh, one one new generation polyester that is called actually named after me as ramapal wow. so it, it used to be called the previous version was called amapal then once i, I came with the new generation uh, polymer polyester they actually called it as ramapal and then That's gave the, gave my you know uh, my name to the thing so those kind of things give me so much of excitement similarly when i composed uh, what do you call the uh, sounds of divinity i composed an, uh, some pieces on lord lord narayana lord shiva and specifically each goddess like that when i compose pieces i get so much of excitement for me both excitements are almost like i enjoy them both right Th so that the, is the uh, reason i hate I, to ask you but you know if you had to choose between chemistry and music i i can see physics and music but how do you even relate chemistry to music or do you do you even not bother to do that but love them both equally i like i love both both of them equally but i feel that you know when i when i'm singing singing if i want a break i got chemistry wow. when i came doing my chemistry i got a break i got music and i right. don't so, believe so it. totally different and when, that's the beauty of it when i'm working in the lab we got we got what is called fume hood because right. all the chemicals should be mm -hmm, used mm -hmm. under fume hood that fume hood is set to my pitch wow so if i had to <laughs> hum hum i'll i'll just uh, hum it to that fume, fume hood fume pitch hood. so my in you know, my pitch right so this is that extent i'm both are part of me right it's almost like if you ask if i ask you you like your left eye better or right eye better so it's like two two sides of the same coin for me it's just that you know some doesn't. of us don't use you know the best of our brain capacities you just ensure that you know you you do you do that yeah <laughs> well uh, yeah, yeah. talking about you know your career spanning i know 35 years and long up you you're still doing your work uh, in terms of the school yes i know it's going on That's right. how about your um uh, the chemistry you know are you yes i still i'm still keeping uh, are keeping you your consultant yes. so what happens is after certain certain years of achieving whatever you want to do i want to do i want to do i want to achieve or uh, that's my passion then a stage will come where what am i passing on to the next generation right legacy what is yes. my legacy so that's when and also teaching is my uh, my what do you call that my love yes because i come from a teaching background because my father was a teacher of history and geography my sisters are lang linguistic lecturers so uh, for me i'm doing teaching in in a uh, musical area but i also now do lot of teaching in the chemistry area i am part of csiro stem program wow. that is science technology yes. engineering mathematics math as part of uh, stem program conducted by csiro I went to this primary school the other day and then we do but they I just asked a open question what's a rainbow so and everybody said rainbow is in the in the you know it's in the sky it's in the sky so no I'm going to bring the rainbow to the classroom wow then I said how you know then we then we started oh, having this uh, uh, M&M chocolates of different colors right. and then put them into various uh, 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 plates right and then generate the color and then just mix the colors and you know mix the colors and then develop your own color so when they look at oh i've got a rainbow in my in my in my you know uh, yeah. in my uh, on the table yeah. and the rainbow is coming to the table you can see the excitement and also so one of the girl, one of the boys goes and says that i'm going to tell my mom i'm i want to be a scientist i want to grow up to be a scientist also inspired and then he inspired it. and then he even says that when i uh, this is the best of my life Wow. It's the best of my life. <laughs> I've done some experiment. I found out something. I learned something, and it's all science. I am I'm going to grow up to be a scientist like you. So that is a great outcome. Absolutely, uh, outcome because it's it's not only passion. Having a passion, to have a passion, then get all the skills needed for the uh, to to fulfill your fa passion, and then perfect them, and then pass on to the next generation. So what else? It is a it's like it's like. 
a complete cycle. Right. The right. cycle of just you acquire the knowledge, that's fine, but you have to inspire others and then try to show them a path where they can they can become even bigger than bigger scientists are if they can become you know, world is there, oyster. You know, the most beautiful thing that I realized as you were talking about passing on the legacy to the next generation, usually uh, most parents would want their children to carry on their legacy. But you, I know you're a successful scientist. You are an amazing musician who has a line of students, an amazing line of students. And apart from all that, you are such a wonderful mother who has let your children choose their you know their own career paths you never you never in, you know instilled something in them or said you have to follow you know this one because it is a part of our family or you know this is i want you to carry on my legacy you let them choose their own career how did that happen like uh, was it hard to let go of you know uh, the thought that you know your, your children may not end up as scientists but now they're lawyers and your daughter, I know, is exploring the world and has her own podcast as well. Yes, uh, yes. I think this, this is a really, really fantastic question because for me, I have a deep feeling that every one of us comes to come to this world with a deep purpose. Absolutely. No one has got, and then it takes time for them to understand their purpose and then their niche, where they are comfortable, where they are going to explore. So by just letting them do what they want to do, they will excel rather than putting boundaries on them yes. and then make them do what I want them to do. Then, then they won't meet their purpose because you have, you have a great purpose. You are a, you are a great mother and then you've got a yoga school and you've got a dance school and then you know two languages, several <laughs> languages. And you know, like, like if, your, if your parents stopped you, right. stopped you and then said that you have, you have to go in this path, if they direct you to a very narrow path, right. you wouldn't be growing to like a full, you know, like a charming person you are now. <laughs> because, and I, similarly, I see, I see exactly that. And then some people think that, do you miss your daughter singing? I said, for me, honestly, if one of my best students singing with me is as good as my daughter singing with me. Absolutely. I see my children in my students. Uh, students. So mm -hmm. I have I've gone to that level now. But for, I, it doesn't, that border line between mine and not mine is not there. Not there. It's not there. What, so, what a great message. It's not, not uh, there. In fact, um, the younger generation, the newer generation, we come up with all sorts of excuses, I'm guilty too, that we don't have the time. Uh, what would be your advice for this generation? Not, not just with regard to time, but in general. In general, my advice is, first, all of us should have a dream. You should have a dream. You should have a dream. And then when it is a dream, go for it. Go for it and then do not even think that anybody is uh, going to stop you. Just pursue your dream, pursue your dream, and then pursue your passion. And then if you want to make your passion as your profession, check yourself whether you've got all the skills conditioned. You've got the right, right skills and the right place are you there. And if you want to convert your passion into it. Otherwise, have, you can have more than one passion. Hmm. Just we got a great example of Australian Rick Charlesworth. Right. He's an MP, right. he's a medical uh, medicine, I mean doctor, and he led Australia to in Olympics in hockey for gold medal. So you can't, and then he's also a Western Australian cricketer. So what else you want? One person can do, can do this all. many to this uh, world level. So if you've got more than one competing passions, please follow on. Please take up, take both of them. That's that's the that's the theory I follow. Because at no stage I was willing to get. A, a, leave my chemistry at no stage I was not willing I was willing to leave my music so I was holding on but I now I feel sit down at my age at, my, at, at this phase of my life and I, I don't can, see you rest now either <laughs> no, <laughs> because it's passion as I said right. I just keep singing uh, keep singing or keep doing my chemistry but when I look at it look at it, just the other day I was thinking after I got this uh, OIM I was thinking what who am I who am I what, who is Rama then I looked at it Doctor Rama Rao OAM. Ha! Huh. Doctor shows that I have a, my is a reflection of my passion, and the OAM is whatever I di contributed in music, in 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 mentoring or in performing or wh whatever the culture I brought to Australia, 
added to this society another culture and then used it to do a lot of charity shows and then not only spreading the art but used it to the community local mm. community and the benefit of the community contributed to making australia truly multicultural truly. so truly multicultural uh, australia so when i looked at it hmm, that's not a bad purpose because it's good i kept both <laughs> totally it is good i kept both so otherwise i would sit sit when sit in my music room and then worry about i could have been a scientist i could have taken up another you know assignment another invention or another research project instead i don't do that now because i've been there done that so you can see that that uh, a, a complete satisfaction satisfaction Absolutely. god has that given makes me, me curious again if you ever had to feel regret in life do you have any regrets in life at all at this stage no 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 regrets <laughs> no regrets I, i mean at some point you know when i first came to australia maybe if i were i was in india you know did more music or something but no because i had a this is the purpose as i said before everybody has got a purpose if i was in india what i would have contributed i don't know but here substantially lot of people got benefited lot number of people in the, in the 35 years number of people have benefited and then now they are mothers and then i'm teaching their children as well the, my school has got as a matter of fact has got three generations wow three generations <laughs> father and father and mother used to learn then their children and then their children i'm teaching three generations so i don't ask i can't ask any better than that and awesome. then i'm still keeping up my scientific um, interests promoting again and then generating younger um, people younger scientists generating younger scientists and generating younger musicians that's it. that's my role at, the, at this point in time so beautiful so. and so very inspiring जनन मरण भय शोक विदो there is uh, you know there is no reason as to why you know you you were not you know you you are awarded the order of australia medal and I, i i just wonder why you weren't awarded it earlier for all the inspiration that you've been giving to the community but nevertheless it's come to you at uh, the time that is you know the most deserving and uh, congratulations once again dr marao and it's been a pleasure and so humbling to have you on our show the icon thank, thank you so much once again thank you so much and also i want to take this opportunity to thank m4 tv for giving me this opportunity to say a few words and also all the best wishes to all the mtv audiences thank Good you luck. thank you